and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry, and I'm your host, Terry Cato. I have the honor and the privilege of welcoming to the show Ms. Helen Sims, the second vice president of the San Jose Silicon Valley NAACP. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to share some great information with our viewers. And I want to open up, or I want to start with, first of all, could you just give us some history and some background of the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I just want everybody to know what that acronym stands for. And if you could just give us some information about the organization, Absolutely. that would be great. Well, that's a good question because uh, NAACP certainly has a long history. Uh, First of all, it was founded in 1909 when a group of um, w um, women and men, a very diverse group, uh, educators, intellectuals, but they all had one common uh, thread that brought them together, and that was to try to make a difference in the lives of African Americans, particularly at that time because lynching was the driving force that was uh, disrupting the country, uh, and they wanted to do something about it, to be, uh, today we would say, the resistors of that time to, to uh, stop this massive uh, invasion of lynching of African Americans, and we know that had just come down uh, through the years post-slavery. So in 1909, in New York, um, this group of outstanding leaders came together, men and women, and I think that's a critical point to mention that there were a number of women in the group included uh, to uh, try to make a difference and uh, alleviate this heinous crime of lynching that was going on uh, in the North and the, uh, especially the South. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the thrust. The, the thrust, the and that was, that was the thrust and the mission of the organization and kind of why they were founded and the principle upon which they were founded, the organization. And um, could you just um, kind of give us a transition or tell us um, what is the current mission? Because I think for a lot of my generation, perhaps Generation Xers and perhaps a lot of the millennials, I don't know if they really know that the NAACP is still a very active and still a very vibrant organization in our community and that it's a resource and it's a tool for mm -hmm. us. So I just want you to um, just first of all let people know that um, you guys are very much alive and active <laughs> yes. although um, praise be to God we don't witness lynchings or we don't have that problem anymore, but we definitely have other issues in our community and that you guys mm -hmm. are very much a present mm -hmm. force. So if you could just um, let the viewers know um, kind of how the how the NAACP has transitioned and what you guys are working on now in this new millennial. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, well, the NAACP evolved through uh, about three different areas. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, the first uh, thrust was to address the issues of lynching. Mm -hmm. And from that, they moved into the civil rights era, uh, the 1940s and the 1950s. Uh, you, you can recall, uh, and probably most of our viewers will have heard the name Thurgood Marshall. Absolutely. Uh, uh, under his leadership, uh, they addressed uh, civil rights issue, and probably the one that stands out the most was the Brown versus Board of Education decision right. of 1954, which uh, eliminated uh, racial segregation of the schools. Okay, so the decision was made in 1964, excuse me, 1954 by the Supreme Court, uh, but it did take. Um, a number of years before it was fully implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll recall things like uh, Mississippi Freedom Summer, uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1964 and 65, uh, which really launched um, um, what we see now with 
the voting, the importance of voting, mm -hmm. and the importance of not voting, the Absolutely. results of not voting. Yes. Um, so NAACP has been very, very instrumental in those areas uh, that have brought us into the 21st century. Um, absolutely amazing when we think of uh, the progress that we have made, but also equally amazing when we think of how far we have yet to go. Absolutely. Um, and so that, that uh, is a bridge into the 21st century and where we are now. And so uh, from a national standpoint, uh, it, NAACP is a national organization. And at this point, um, NAACP has uh, more than 2,200 uh, local branches, mm -hmm. uh, as well as about a half a million uh, members nationally. Oh, that's amazing. Um, our chapter here in, our branch here in San Jose was founded in the 1940s, and today we have about 2,000 members locally. Wow, that's great. So, um, Silicon Valley is doing well in terms of numbers Absolutely. and members, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we wish we had more active members right. because, uh, as we say, boots on the ground, that's where you get the work done. Absolutely. Um, so um, moving on from that, just uh, thinking about uh, what are some of the current programs, some of the issues that we uh, are focused with here in San Jose, uh, if we step back to the um, 1990s, mm -hmm. uh, there was one major case that came out of San Jose, mm -hmm. and that was really uh, in regards to Denny's. Uh, at that time, what brought about that incident, a group of young people went into Denny's mm -hmm. ju just to have a bite to eat and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and they looked around. Now, this is San Jose Denny's on Blossom Hill. Okay. And they looked around and saw everybody else being served, but they weren't being served. Mm -hmm. um, and being that they were young activist-minded youth, mm -hmm. uh, they did take the next step. They aligned with the NAACP and uh, eventually brought about national action mm -hmm. to ensure um, quality service for all of the guests of Denny's. Okay. And so that's and, and let's And let's just elaborate a little bit more on that. So, um, so basically, because you said a lot of stuff, and I just want people to know exactly how the NAACP was able to help them. So basically, this was a group of young people mm -hmm. who felt like they were being discriminated against, and they kind of had the, um, I guess, the insight or the fortitude or the smarts to know, first of all, I'm being discriminated against. This is wrong. Mm -hmm. I want to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So they came to the NAACP, and how did the NAACP represent them? or help them mm -hmm. further that and bring about um, national awareness of what was going on. Because I mentioned um, before when we were talking offline that when this happened, I was actually down south. I was in Mississippi and Alabama in college during this time. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing about the Denny's incident all over the news, mm -hmm. not knowing that it originated right out of San Jose, California. So could you just elaborate um, a little bit more on exactly like what did the NAACP do? Well, first of all, uh, the young people had the insight uh, to know that this was bigger than just walking into Denny's on Blossom Hill. They realized that this was systemic mm -hmm. and um, realized that it would be best for them to align with an organization uh, that could help them. And with the guidance of their parents, being NAACP background members, uh, they realized that they really needed to collaborate. And so the collaboration was brought about, and uh, being a national organization, the NAACP was to add their uh, voice uh, and deal on a corporate level with uh, uh, Denny's uh, because what was happening at the local Denny's was happening, it was pervasive. Absolutely. Uh, we now know. It was very yes. pervasive yes. in a lot of different areas. So mm -hmm. it wasn't just um, the lack of service or the lack of attention or the systemic 
um, discrimination against minorities, but it was in a lot of different areas in um, the pay, I think it was the pay it, and hiring yes. um, issues. It was just, it was kind of across the board. Absolutely. And, um, and that's awesome that the NAACP played um, a, a major role in bringing that to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we want people to know is mm -hmm. that um, sometimes we don't need to expend a lot of energy trying to recreate the wheel, but perhaps we just need to engage and collaborate mm -hmm. with organizations that are already in place, like the NAACP mm -hmm. that was founded to ensure civil rights for all people. So if you feel like you've been discriminated against, um, you know, there's organizations out there that can help you and speak for you, like the NAACP mm -hmm. and the EEOC, and then we have, you know, the National Urban League. So yes. there's amazing organizations out there that are doing things. And I think that that, um, again, like I've mentioned, you know, Gen Xers, Millennials, we just kind of perhaps need to do a little bit more research because these organizations are very active and they're very prestigious and they have a lot of pull and a lot of resources to make things happen. And we have the history to mm -hmm. prove it. That is just so true. Um, instead of feeling helpless in that, yes. oh, what can I, one person do? Uh, when you team up and have strength in numbers. Absolutely. I like strength that. Strength in strength numbers. Strength in numbers. Is that the Warriors? That is the Warriors. <laughs> that, that is um, very Bay Area, but that's so true. Strength in numbers. <laughs> yes. It, it just works across the board. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's where you're going to see the success come when you can uh, bring in uh, more voices to address issues that are affecting all of us Absolutely. in some way. And so I'm so glad you brought out that point about how it was more than just a waitress not serving this group of young people, but it had to do with the employment uh, on the local level, uh, on the corporate level, mm -hmm. and on the national Absolutely. level. Absolutely. And so uh, by collaborating uh, with NAACP working together, they were able to implement changes that uh, are in place today, uh, but have just really, really made a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely made Absolutely. a difference. That's awesome, and um, that's so encouraging because we have some major issues um, facing the community, um, you know, just everything from um, black men and women being shot down and, and dragged from cars and, you know, with the police brutality, we just, I mean, the work doesn't stop. We still have more work to do. Like you said, unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes I feel like, are we in the 21st century or did we go back? <laughs> are we back in, you know, Jim Crow times? Because sometimes it truly feels like that. But I am encouraged when I hear about the work of the NAACP and other organizations and establishments that have been around for years and that have brought about change mm -hmm. on a national mm -hmm. level. So we're going to take a break and um, we will be back and we're going to keep discussing the NAACP and the changes that, um, that are happening in the community and how you can engage and collaborate with the NAACP to bring about change in your community. Thank you. Welcome back to Real Talk with Terry. And again, I have sitting with me Ms. Helen Sims, the second vice president of the San Jose Silicon Valley NAACP. And we're talking community activism. We're talking about the NAACP and the fact that it is a very, um, the, in, the organization is very much alive and active in the, on the national level and in the local community. And I want to talk a little bit more about the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, which is one of the many legacies that Thurgood Marshall left behind. And um, if you could just elaborate a little bit more on the Legal Defense Fund, the fact that the Legal Defense Fund is still active. Absolutely. You can donate to it and just let people know mm -hmm. that it's a resource that's there mm -hmm. for them, for the community. Yes, I'm so glad that you uh, want to really include that because the Legal Defense Fund 
uh, is the major arm of the NAACP uh, to bring sp about specific change uh, for our society. Uh, and when you look back historically on the Legal Defense Fund, uh, that's why, where all of those major changes like the Voting Rights Act and of course Brown versus Board of Education and so on down the line uh, to bring about change in our lives. So uh, early on NAACP realized that to bring about substantial change, mm -hmm. a systemic change that was going to reach down to the bottom level to help all of us, it had to come through legal change. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the emphasis was put there, because really at that time that was the only door open for us. And thank goodness NAACP stepped in to uh, address those issues so that changes could be made uh, to benefit all of our society. Absolutely. Uh, and it still exists as a very viable uh, um, opportunity to support our country, uh, to bring about changes that we still need today, because we certainly know uh, as we look around and see the injustices, uh, number one, if you think about the incarceration rates of uh, African American people of color, uh, we're represented in uh, the jail system, 25% uh, uh, of the jail population represents us while we're not nearly that much of the national population. Right. So thank goodness for the Legal Defense Fund being there to uh, continually work on our behalf. Absolutely. So if um, so, you can. What I learned, you can actually go right to the um, NAACP's website. You can donate to the fund. Um, again, if you need resources or if you need le feel like you need legal assistance, perhaps you feel like you've been systematically discriminated against, mm -hmm. whether it be in an organization, in employment. Mm -hmm like we found with the teenagers in the case with Denny's, if you mm -hmm. see something and you feel like it's systematic discrimination, you know, on social media, we've all heard about and seen incidents at specific department stores that I will leave nameless, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but um, where people feel like they have a history of discriminating mm -hmm. against people mm -hmm. of color. Um, if you truly feel that, the NAACP is an organization that's here to help you to investigate that, to meet with the corporate leaders and that's one thing that I feel like we need to do a better job of and that's just bridging the two bridging movements you know bridging you know what the younger generation is doing I feel like they've done a great job getting mm -hmm. our attention letting us know or bringing to the forefront yeah. we have an issue change needs to come about now I feel like there's organizations like I've said again NAACP the EEOC, um, the Ur National Urban League yes. that are established and they've been around for a long time and they're very influential. Collaborate with these organizations mm -hmm. if you feel like you have an yes. issue and you might be a small guy. Well, mm -hmm. these are big organizations mm -hmm. that have th the funding, they have the corporate leadership, they have the professionalism mm -hmm. that can speak for you and that mm -hmm. have influence as history has shown us. So again, know that these organizations are out there, mm -hmm. engage with them utilize their services and become active members so yes and that really brings us to where we are today that we really need to learn how to work together uh, everyone brings something to the table uh, <clears throat> but what we're seeing in these cases that really affect all of us uh, on a national level because what happens in San Jose is a microcosm of what is happening in other areas Absolutely. The, the problems are quite similar some of the details are a bit different, mm -hmm. but uh, overall it's still addressing similar type problems. And that's where it's, uh, NAA can be a, a huge benefit. On the local level, you can start with contacting our branch, uh, the branch uh, that is closest to you, uh, and file a complaint. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, we can work together to uh, resolve the issue and as needed bring in the national organization where it is warranted um, for issues that uh, transcend 
say our local area. Absolutely. And one of the things that um, another thing that I want to talk about, which um, the local NAACP here in San Jose, Silicon Valley actually did, and this was back in the 2000s, it was when um, then President Rick Callender, he created the Youth Leadership Forum. And if you could just tell us a little bit more about the Leadership Forum and his um, Driving Wild Black initiative, mm -hmm. because you think, okay, this was back in the 2000s, thousands we're in 2018 and we still have a driving while black <laughs> issue and incidents that have happened again and I thank God for social media because it has really brought these issues to light and if you could yes. just talk more about that and and in our area we definitely have to be inclusive driving while black driving for as uh, brown uh, as a former educator on Mondays I, I when students came back from the weekend, I would always hear stories about uh, how someone had been stopped, an older brother, sister, someone stopped and um, uh, a search went forth uh, mm -hmm. that probably wasn't necessary. Um, so these, these are issues that affect uh, us all as people of color. Um, and that issue, Driving While Black, did originate here in San Jose. Um, <clears throat> and so that uh, the national was brought in to help resolve that. Absolutely. Um, also, just have to, you referenced the uh, leadership forum that uh, was one of the local programs that we have here in San Jose that was started by uh, then President Rick Callender. Uh, we do have a 2018 version of the leadership <laughs> forum, um, which the youth council will be hosting uh, next month. It's a youth forum, and so we like to send out an invitation uh, to all of the young people out there, high school and college age. Uh, please put it on your calendar. Go to our website, NAACP.org, and you can find out more information about how to sign up and participate and join in and attend this forum. And if you're so led, uh, align yourself with the NAACP Youth Council. Uh, it's the place you want to be to help uh, bring about that change that we need. Absolutely. And um, before we close, is there anything else that you want to share about the NAACP? Um, you know, we didn't talk much about it, but um, I know the Black Lives Matter movement is very active. Um, they have the attention of the public. Um, and how, can you just name some ways, how can the NAACP and perhaps the Black Lives Matter movement, how can they, um, I don't know, maybe better align themselves? Or what are some things that you recommend that um, leaders in that, those mm -hmm. kinds of organizations do to kind of lean on established um, organizations mm -hmm. that are here to help? It, it's very critical that we all learn to work together. Absolutely. Uh, you heard it said before here, strength in numbers. And we all need to be at the table to see the commonality that we have and also to see how we can help each other. Uh, there's so much work to be done, so much change that needs to come about. And working together is the solution uh, because what the strength of the NAACP brings uh, and the strength that uh, movements like uh, Me Too yes. and um, Black, Lives, Black Matter. Lives Matter bring, uh, these are all vital to all of us. Absolutely. But we, we need to work uh, more closely together and I know that we can because we're really addressing the same problems. Absolutely, absolutely. Same problems. Same problems. So again, um, we just want to reiterate that there's strength in numbers that the NAACP on a national level and on a local level, they're here to help the people. The NAACP is a civil rights organization, so feel free to reach out to your local NAACP, the national NAACP. If you feel like you have an issue or you've been systematically discriminated against, we're going to have some information um, at the end of the show, uh, right before the credits, on how you can reach out to the local chapter of the NAACP mm -hmm. here in Silicon Valley, San Jose. So so um, again, um, just utilize the resources that are there. Don't try to recreate the wheel. Let's all try to work together. Let's try to collaborate. Let's engage with what's already there because we have some great organizations and institutions. So I just want to leave you on this note. 
and oh. jo and join us for our Friendship and Freedom Gala yes. on April 28th. This is a time when we honor the community leaders, recognize them for their contributions, and also bring together our civic leaders. Yes. So again, join them for their friendship and their friends and friendship gala um, on April 28th. That will be on their website. So um, again, um, I just want to um, thank, you thank you for, for joining you. us. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. And I'd like to leave you on a positive note. Just remember that yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift, which is why we call it the present. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Yeah.